Based on the amount of fanboys hyping the show, a running gag of putting its main character in cat ears, and scenes like this. It may seem like The Apothecary Diaries is just another horny anime show on a long docket of ones that come out every season. But what if I told you that this series is much more complex than it seems, that it features one of the most well-rounded female lead characters in this year's newest anime, and that it's hiding an ugly truth often overlooked? Welcome anime friends, if you're new here, hi my name is Phoenix, and today we're going to be breaking down the complexities of this season's, maybe even this year's most popular character, Mau Mau from The Apothecary Diaries, to determine what exactly makes her so special. Before we begin though, as always, make sure to grab your cup because it's time to spill the anime tea. Also, if you want to get your own anime-inspired tea, make sure to check out Ocha Anime using the code ANNIETT where you can get 15% off your next purchase by using the link down in the pinned comment and the description of this video. I've already gone through this entire canister of tea. Really, we all know that if we want to find stories that have well-rounded female lead characters, we don't have to look much further than Shoujo and Jose series. But since we also know that getting a good adaptation of Shoujo and Jose series is few and far between, we're left with whatever else anime has to throw at us. So it's always refreshing to at least have a series that has a realistic young woman at its center, while also maintaining popular story structures and arcs that are popular throughout other areas of anime. For example, in The Apothecary Diaries, it chooses to forego the elaborate supernatural abilities that we see in lots of other series, as well as the power scaling that often comes with the territory, and instead takes elements of murder mystery, a dash of Dr. Stone-like medical inventions, characters with great chemistry, and puts them all into a rich historical fiction setting based off of the elaborate inner workings of Chinese imperial palaces. Mix that all together in a pot and you've got Kusuria no Hitori Goto, or The Apothecary Diaries, a story about a girl named Mao Mao who's kidnapped from her village and sold to work in the inner walls of the Imperial Palace. She decides to keep her head down and finish out her days of labor quietly, but ends up revealing her skills when a mystery ailment strikes two prominent courtesans and their children, and she decides to secretly help by using her knowledge growing up as the daughter of an apothecary. But her efforts are discovered by the elusive Jinchi, a high-ranking eunuch, and she is tasked with solving and preventing various medical mysteries that appear in the palace. Apothecary Diary, at its barest form, has all of the elements of universal storytelling that anime and publishing and licensing companies have been trying to put out more and more recently in the past few years. If you haven't noticed, series that have a little bit of something for everyone tend to be more popular and tend to be the ones that get, get more movies, merchandise, and things of that nature because they have an audience to show for its popularity. And Apothecary Diaries is kind of going along that same path. Maybe not as big as a scale as Spy Family did, but still in a way that connects to multiple demographics of the anime fandom. The series truly has something for everyone. For example, you get to see early medical practices and explore the most essential elements that led to medicines that we know today, things that fans of Dr. Stone might appreciate in a newer anime. You also get historical drama drenched in gossip spread between courtesans, eunuchs, and ladies-in-waiting, which we see in lots of other historical drama, anime, and even live series that are kind of popular. I mean, I think it was this year that we also got Raven of the Inner Palace and we got the second season of Heaven's Official Blessing. There's lots of stories based in this type of time period based off like the Chinese Imperial Palace kind of historical setting uh, that people tend to like. There's also tantalizing mysteries that sit just on the cusp of all the drama. There's a little hint of romance for those who are looking for a little bit of romance but not, you know, not in a way that overpowers the story. And there's also a bunch of well-endowed courtesans for the booba boys and people who are into that. But most importantly, there is a really human element that many people could relate to, especially in the struggle of the lead character growing up in a society that only sees women as a means to a single end. And of course, it's in its main character, in Mao Mao and her quiet observations, that the series really shines. Even when it reveals an ugly truth that is often forgotten in, in storytelling about women and their experiences. But back to Mao Mao real quick. She is a great example of a well-rounded character. And arguably, her popularity alone kind of brings up the value of the series. I mean, if you just look at some of these uh, my anime list reviews, a lot of them have entire sections dedicated simply to Mamao's character and why she is so great. Kusuria no Hitori Goto's captivating protagonist with her flaws and intricacies significantly enhanced the show, making it all the more compelling. 
her dynamic personality, oscillating between fearlessness, caution, and occasional clumsiness, is such a delight. Mau Mau is a reason alone to watch this show. Her passion and endless thirst for knowledge brings a glorious gap to her usual mellow, calm yet multifaceted personality. Well, she is your typical not like other girls female lead, but her quirks are still funny and unique. I love Mau Mau's passion for poison and menacing mode when things get serious. Well, most reviewers seem to like her character except for this one who thinks she resembles a typical western woman despite the series being set in a fictional version of historical China. Our protagonist is something that has plaque the western media for some time now. A girl that knows everything and can, and can do no wrong. Also, she is a strong female individual that would not be manipulated or fall for the charms of the most beautiful guy in the palace. You go, girl. Anyway, the main consensus seems to be that Mau Mau is mostly lovable, and this is because of her well-rounded personality that feels human yet still has the characteristics of a likable lead in a series. She's honest, single-minded, and often ruthless when it comes to her profession and her need to save people. She's an expert in her field and she's confident in her abilities, yet she second guesses her intuition. She can be cold but yet easily affected by those that tease her, but is also great at teasing people herself. She dances and enjoys eating poison, well at least you know that's what we see in the opening, which is incredible by the way. And most importantly, she gets adorable cat ears when she sees herbs. In a world of choose your trait anime characters that seem to pop up every single day, Mau Mau stands out for simply having a well-rounded personality that doesn't lean too heavily one way or the other and doesn't make her easily box in to the character tropes or things that define her. And that makes her seem more human, which in turn makes her seem more relatable. Which I know I often mention how much anime characters are relatable to real people and some people might be tired of that because, you know, they're, they're just anime characters. But you're gonna be sick of me because I'm bringing it up again because I think that she has some real things that we need to talk about that really do relate to real life experiences that make the story even better in my opinion. Not too dissimilar to how Bochi the Rock handles social anxiety through its main character in a way that many people afflicted with it can deeply identify with, Mau Mau in the Apothecary Diaries is relatable simply because she represents a key experience that many people, and in my experience, particularly women and femmes, have experienced and continue to experience, which is keeping a low profile to make themselves more palatable non-threatening and non-sexual for their own safety. Now this section I'm going to be diving a little bit into spoilers for episode 5 of the series so if you want to skip ahead to the rest of the spoiler free review I uh, just skip ahead in the little chapter section. Spoiler coming up! In episode 5 the audience and several characters in the show learn that Mau Mau's freckles are actually makeup she uses to dull her appearance. To anyone who felt the scene may have flew over their head and doesn't really understand why this is important to the story or the character, it kind of speaks to the life experiences that you may have had. Mau Mau admitting that she purposely marks her face so that she is seen as less attractive is really important because it adds a layer to the reasons that she stated in the beginning of her story about wanting to live as free and simple a life as possible. Mau Mau states that adding freckles to her face is a form of protection not only from would-be kidnappers and the ever-present customers of the courtesans of her village who are often left unsatisfied and intoxicated at the end of their visits, but also from being dragged into the almost inevitable path of working at the brothels her village is known for. When Mama explained her reasons for lowering her appearance, um, I immediately identified and like felt a connection with her character. In a way, like the first few episodes didn't capture as much for me. I did like her, she was funny, but this just brought it like full circle for why her character is so amazing. I'm sure many people who have been in similar situations can relate to Mau Mau, what Mau Mau is talking about in her experiences, lowering or lessening her looks to seem more palatable and also to stay out of trouble. And I keep air quoting lowering looks because, you know, in this case, it's she's adding freckles, which are not seen as attractive in this setting. This is a multi-layered aspect of Mau Mau's personality and of real life people and experiences that I could break down in many several ways. For example, uh, this concept reflects in women not being taken seriously because of their looks, as well as the concept of having to dress a certain way to seem more approachable. For example, dressing modestly often garners women more respect 
that can also kind of mark you as a prude. Uh, showing off your assets unsolicited often brings contempt, gets you called all sorts of sexual deviant slurs, and diminishes your authority, but also garners more views and attention. Really, the way you dress, the way you look, everything about your physical appearance is open to subject subjective and uh, critical behavior. And it's kind of doubly so in this case for women in the apothecary diaries. There are even times when I've questioned like outfits I've worn in some of my videos because of the responses that I got in some of the videos. And also for another show, Esper talks about her own experiences with this where someone was, where she reads a comment where someone is breaking down like her outfit in a video and how that correlates to her not having a, a good opinion or a good um, way of expressing her ideas in one of her videos, which is absolutely insane. But definitely go check out Esper and her content uh, if you want good deep dives on anime and manga. Also, she has the greatest Jujutsu Kaisen takes. In Mau Mau's case, it's simply that her clear skin is enough to garner her unwanted attention despite her herself noting that she lacks other aspects that often draw people's eyes, which is also a running gag in the series when she talks about the courtesans, because the courtesans, if you notice, all kind of have the same kind of situation going on up here, if you know what I mean. Anyway, she knew that even something as simple as clear skin was enough to get her sent to the brothels or attacked, and so she found a way to protect herself in a simple yet honest way. She just marked her appearance so that she would seem less attractive. There's this key message, this key thing that Mama brings up that I think really hits like the point home. And it's the fact that despite Mamo taking these precautions, despite her marking her face and dressing modestly and covering up and making sure that she stayed out of the way of people that could ultimately change her life, she still got kidnapped anyway. She did everything right and she still got kidnapped anyway. And this just speaks to like the cruel fate of women in the apothecary diaries of people even in real life who may have gone through situations like this that even when you follow every guideline even if you're modest even if you do everything right and don't cause trouble or bring attention to yourself you are still possibly going to be in some kind of danger for simply existing sometimes simply existing with a vagina Mamau's reflections of her life reveal the sad reality that has followed her from the brothels of her village into the inner workings of the palace, drawing parallels between both sets of women whose value is placed in being tools for sex. The silver lining in the Apothecary Diaries is that the show, despite having some pretty dark implications and references and even like a foundation for the story to be based off of, still chooses positivity and a more optimistic outlook, especially for the main character, Mao Mao. For example, despite Mao Mao being kidnapped and, putting, and put into the palace, to work uh, against her will. She's able to find a way to still be an apothecary. She's able to help people. She's able to do mostly positive things and make positive changes in the inner palace, which allows the audience not only to relate to, you know, Mau Mau's struggles as a character, but also just root for her own ambitions that she's able to steadily like work her way up into this complicated world and still be the person that she's always wanted to be. As usual, I expect someone to say that I'm looking for too far into these series um, because I do and I love doing it. On the surface, The Apothecary Diary seems like just another historical slice of life with some comedy and a bit of mystery thrown in. But yeah, its foundation is built off of real experiences that reflect real people who can relate to the protagonist and even root for her version of a happy ending. Which for now just seems to be her being surrounded by the herbs that she loves and being able to help people, which is like a simple but honest goal that I am rooting for. Mama is great. I want all the good things for her character. And in the background, there's a little bit possibility of a romance that isn't too potent. And honestly, I could give or take in this series. Like I wouldn't even mind if that just like didn't end up being super, super important to the story. But also at the same time, if they do it correctly and it's interesting, I don't mind seeing it. Like I just, as long as it doesn't negatively impact Mau Mau as a character in a way that makes her values or what she does less. Anyway, there's 24 episodes of this series and we are literally only eight episodes in at the time of me making this video. So there's a whole lot more that can happen from now to the end of the series. So if something does happen, I probably will make an update um, about it, especially if it's something really important or something that I was really captivated by. Other than that, if you're watching The Apothecary Diaries, how do you like it so far? Have you seen it? Will you watch it? Let me know politely in the comments down below and let's talk about it a little bit more because I personally 
love talking about the series. I could talk about more of it, but I'm not going to because I don't have that much time. But thank you so much for watching. If you want to watch another video where I break down another anime series, make sure to check out whatever pops up up here. And remember that even though we live in a society, we can still try to make the most of it when we can. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.